Okay, good morning everyone. My name's Silvana. I'm on the board of the National Respite Association and in my day job I work for Northcott, um, based here in Parramatta and also statewide. Um, so welcome this morning um, to the next session where Commonwealth's priorities for respite in Commonwealth Home Support Program. Um, so th what the priorities are for that. So just before we get started, I just want to remind you about um, the Twitter hashtag. So join the conversation, guys. Um, it's hashtag respite2014. Um, also, just a quick reminder about the dinner tonight. If you haven't already registered yourself, it's um, going to be a great night. So we encourage you to go to the registration table and register yourself for dinner tonight. Um, I would just like to start by thanking our, one of our sponsors, HSNet. So HSNet is a free, secure network that has just been completely revamped. Um, and I would encourage you to go visit their booth and see um, how you can use it and what the benefits are of joining that network. Um, so just before we start, um, we've got good 360 um, that's just going to come and say a few words. Are they in the room? Okay, we might grab that the next one. <laughs> Um, so Good360 is an organisation which connects excess products to people in need. Um, so if they do turn up in between the um, sessions, we'll give them an opportunity to speak about what they do then. Um, so I just want to uh, introduce... Sorry. Lucille Veneros. <laughs> um, she's coming in to talk to us about what the Commonwealth's priorities are for respite in Commonwealth Home Support Program. Um, so Lucille... Sorry, I've just lost my spot here. <laughs> so the new Commonwealth Home Support Program starts on the 1st of July 2015 and will absorb HAC and NRCP funded respite services. There will be new strategic priorities and a focus on flexible cottage and emergency respite. How will these be implemented? Lucille Veneros from ACT, New South Wales DSS State Manager, has been with the department since 2009, following a 17-year career with both the New South Wales and Western Australia State Health Service. She has worked on a range of issues, including data and information management, safety and quality aspects of healthcare, aged care, health service policy and statewide services. So we'll um, just invite Lucille to come up and we'll um, have some time for questions after the presentation. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me, inviting me here today. Oh, I think we've skipped to a different session somehow. <laughs> and if I click that, I'll end up talking to you about the future of respiting mental health, and I'm not sure I'm ready to talk to you about that. I could have a go. <coughs> thank you. Okay. Before I begin, I'd like to um, acknowledge the traditional owners on the lands on which we meet today um, and pay my respect to uh, those elders, both past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge any of the traditional owners that are actually here with us today. Okay. So the Commonwealth Home Support Program, um, which I'm sure most of you are familiar, has um, been discussed now for a little while. And this session that I'm going to present today is um, focusing on the changes um, that are before us in the context of aged care in particular. Um, and you're having, a, I understand, a session tomorrow from Karen Wilson, who's also from the Department of Social Services, and she will touch on the disability side of um, these matters. Um, and no doubt you'll start to see these, how these linkages start to occur. As I'm sure you're aware, Commonwealth Home Support Program is um, part of a major uh, aged care reform program that has been underway since 2012. And today I want to just outline some of those changes that are proposed. Now, they are still proposed at the moment um, because we're still waiting for final decisions to be made. Um, and also to touch on some of the reforms happening in my aged care website and what they will mean. So just for those who aren't completely familiar with some of the reforms, since we, we started working on these reforms in 2000, 2012, 2013, um, in 2014 we saw some of those reforms occur and that included changes to the accommodation prices for um, 
and the publishing of that information on my aged care website, the change to fees and subsidies, in particular for um, uh, Commonwealth home pa care packages and the uh, residential side of aged care, and the removal of the high-low distinction um, in, in particular in residential aged care. In 2015, um, we're continuing to focus on the functionality of My Aged Care website, and these are reforms that will um, move us towards uh, July, the annou announcements due in July 2015. The Commonwealth Home Support Program and Consumer Directed Care for all Commonwealth um, home care packages. These are important context for some of the work that is now going on in the Commonwealth Home Support Program as they they start to lay the foundation about where the Commonwealth is moving um, these matters to more broadly. Okay, the Commonwealth Home Support Program is combining four programs across some um, that are currently in existence. The Commonwealth Hack Program, which where the Commonwealth took over in 2012 from the states. The National Respite for Carers Program, the Day Therapy Centres, and we potentially still undecided at this stage, it may also include the assistance with care and housing for, um, and housing for um, the aged program. The vision that they're trying to create um, and the government's keen to work on in the context of the Commonwealth Home Support Program is that we help older people remain living in the community and we optimise or maximise their independence in doing so. It is a... It, um, it does recognise the Commonwealth Home Support Program in the way it's being designed, the vital role um, both formal and informal carers have in supporting our aged Australians. Um, and it also um, aims to build on some of those support relationships that are actually needed to support carers and uh, individuals to remain living in the community. So there's a very strong focus on independence um, coming through in the Commonwealth Home Support Program design. So just a bit of a recap, we, uh, in May this year, we released a discussion paper about um, the key directions that were proposed for the Commonwealth Home Support Program. Uh, the discussion paper was actually designed uh, in, with input from the Commonwealth Home Support Advisory Group and the National Aged Care Alliance. So it was a consultative process even in the drafting of the position paper or the discussion paper. Consultations then occurred around the country um, on this paper, as, and when we were doing those consultations, we were also briefing on um, the reforms in aged care. We also undertook a, a webinar, um, and I understand this was the first time we had done such a thing in the um, aged care space, and we had about 1,100 people participate in that webinar. It was quite successful in getting that message out more broadly and getting feedback on the directions that were proposed in that discussion paper. We received about 400 submissions in response to the discussion paper. Um, I'm told about 130 of them were actually from New South Wales, so we were strongly represented, uh, which is nothing uncommon based on my experience as being the state manager for New South Wales. Um, and the submissions are being used right now to develop the actual um, strategy for the way forward, so the policy framework in finalising that, and also in drafting up the, pro the, pro the proposed program guidelines. Um, the Commonwealth is actually hoping, or the Department is aiming, I should say, to actually be able to come back to you this calendar year um, with a, um, to confirm what the arrangements under the new program are going to be. So we're still in the stage of developing the final position, but we do anticipate that we will back to talking to you by the end of the financial year with this is the proposed way forward. Um, what I'm going to talk about in the next few slides is actually to bring um, out for you what some of those reforms are or um, that were discussed in the discussion paper and that we're still continuing to look at and focus on in, in designing the overall program. So I'll just cover those off for you so you're uh, fully aware of them. So that's a very distinctive, uh, definitive statement, key changes from 1 July. This is what's proposed in the discussion paper, I need to be clear about that, um, and we're still waiting for final decision. Um, but what is proposed is a one consolidated program, bringing those up to those four programs into one program. That's about two billion per annum um, if we bring those four programs together. So she's a very large granting program. Um, 
as I touched on earlier, that strong focus on wellness and reablement, keeping individuals at home as long as possible. A more targeted approach to the way we do sector support and development. And the introduction of a nationally consistent fees policy. As you can imagine, that is an area of significant debate and interest. Um, and um, we're, I'm sure we're all looking forward to see what that delivers for us um, and, and what that proposes. So with those key um, priorities and directions in mind, the benefits that the Commonwealth is trying to achieve through the amalgamation of these programs and keeping those key, benefit, uh, those key um, points in mind is to introduce common arrangements across Australia in respect of eligibility, assessment, fees, reporting and quality assurance. One of the things that the Commonwealth realised very quickly in taking on the Commonwealth Hack Program or establishing the Commonwealth Hack Program is that we actually had eight different schemes in operation across the country. Um, and so we do not have a nationally consistent approach to, um, to these matters yet. And the Commonwealth Home Support Program is aimed to try and achieve that objective. As you know, we still have some states that haven't quite signed up to the Commonwealth Home um, Hack Program or the Commonwealth Home Support Program. So West Australia has still um, got Hack running independently and Victoria is in the same stage at the moment. So we still won't have a nationally consistent, but the framework and the intent is definitely there. Through this process, um, the Commonwealth is aiming to consolidate 30 different types of service arrangements that we have out there at the moment into 16. And those 16 were articulated in the draft um, discussion paper. Um, by doing this, we actually hope to create opportunities for streamlining service delivery, simplifying arrangements for providers and for consumers. We're also hoping to, through this arrangement in streamlining the programs and bringing the four big programs, maybe, maybe only three of them, together, we also hope to have a significant impact on reduced reporting arrangements for approved providers. I'm oh, sorry, not approved, not under the Act, but for providers. And providers only needed to complete, um, needing to complete one set of reports for all, for the whole suite of programs that you're actually delivering instead of all the different reports we require of you now. It's a very strong focus of the Department of Social Services and if you're aware of the grants um, assessment processes which are underway at the moment in the Department of Social Services, you'll start to see where the department is actually trying to drive this, in, both in terms of streamlined grant arrangements, the new data exchange uh, information which collects um, one set of information um, and the way we propose to then manage grants going forward. In conjunction, um, uh, sorry, I just lost my spellies. Um, oh, in relation to the reporting requirements, I just need to be clear, we're still working through the detail of what they will be, and that is occurring with the Commonwealth Home Support Program Advisory Group. So we're making sure that we get the feedback from the sector about what's practical and what actually will work. But we're very aware that you've got multiple data sets already in use. Um, and making sure that we leverage as much as possible that and don't start with a blank page. Um, in conjunction with, the with these, we're also um, establishing the regional assessment centres. The discussion paper proposes that from July 2015, there will be a separation between assessment of clients' needs and service provision. This is no different to the way aged care is managed both from the Commonwealth Home Support Package arrangements and the residential arrangements, um, sorry, uh, where the Commonwealth is very clear that um, one, one body assesses the need and another body provides the service. So this is a fundamental change to the way the services are currently delivered um, and we have a lot of work to do to put that in place by July 2015. Okay, down to funding, always important. The funding arrangements for the new program are still to be settled, so we're still finalising those with government and um, based on some feedback we've had from the sector. Um, but the items being considered are those listed on the screen. It is not proposed at this stage to move away from block funding, so grant-based funding, in the short term. The National Aged Care Alliance um, has recommended to the department that in the longer term, 
the government look at replacing the current output-based funding arrangement or grant funding arrangement process with a mixed funding arrangement approach that includes individualised uh, funding based on assessed need. And I understand um, you're going to have a presentation from someone tomorrow from the UK who will touch on some of these subjects um, and no doubt we'll be able to share some of the vital lessons that uh, we need to look at in Australia in putting these into place should we proceed down this pathway. The discussion paper proposes that funding for the expansion of services will be underpinned by an aged care planning framework. So for those that are in the business of aged care now in terms of HAC or in terms of home care packages or residential packages, this is in the context that we actually do it based on a population need based on an area. So we move away from um, just an ad hoc submission process to actually a planned approach to the way uh, new services are developed and new growth monies are allocated. But in doing this, um, as we do now in the residential and um, package space, we'd be very keen to make sure that there is uh, sector engagement in determining what the priorities are and the allocations across all the different regions and um, determining how those fundings are spent. Okay, next steps. Um, so, as we mentioned, submissions have been received from the discussion paper. We've held, held a number of forums around the country. We still have some advisory committees operating and giving the department advice. This information is now being finalised in the context of um, developing the Commonwealth Home Support Program manual, timeframes and a transition process. So we are starting to work on how we would actually move from these programs into the Commonwealth Home Support Program by the 1st of July 2015. Um, a manual for the program is being drafted um, and will provide a, a, a fair bit of detail, as our normal manuals do, about how the program will work and operate um, and include how um, the responsibility split between both government and service providers. We do anticipate that we will get a draft of this manual out this calendar year. So we're working hard to try and achieve that. We're also working on the national fees policy. Um, and this also is going through a significant amount of consultation through the National Aged Care Alliance and the Home Support Advisory Group. <coughs> Service types. So um, as part of the transition to the Commonwealth Home Support Program and understanding that we had eight different um, um, Commonwealth Home or Service Delivery environments operating within each of the different jurisdictions, we agreed to undertake some reviews of particular service types because there was so much disparity around the country or because we were unclear about what the future direction of these particular um, aspects of the program should be. So we've now undertaken um, a number of these reviews. Um, these were undertaken in consultation with the sector and the final reports for each of the service types are actually available on um, the department's website, which is dss.gov.au if you're looking for it. There was also a specific focus on the uh, respite, sub, uh, respite area and the respite subgroup of the Commonwealth Home Support Program Advisory Group provided a number of recommendations in their paper, and their paper was called Provision of Respite in the Commonwealth Home Support Program Discussion Paper. And this paper is actually available if you're interested in reading it and finding out what has been suggested from the sector um, on the National Age Care, and Care Alliance website. And if you don't have that um, web address, you can either just enter National Age Care um, Alliance in your Google search, or it's www.naca, N-A-C-A. .asn.au. Okay, so we have a look at the respite, um, particularly in the context of the Commonwealth Home Support Program. Um, the vital role that carers play in supporting older people to remain living um, in the community, as well as the provision of good quality respite um, continue to be a strong focus of the home support arrangements um, proposed for the future. So we don't propose to move away from that commitment. Uh, it is not anticipated that respite will be diminished as a result 
of transitioning to the Commonwealth Home Support Program. So there's still a strong commitment to making sure that respite remains part of the Commonwealth Home Support Program. The proposed features of respite in the Commonwealth Home Support Program that were identified in the discussion paper and um, guided by the subgroup um, include that respite care for older people aged 65 and over, or 50 and over for those that are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, uh, will be provided in the Commonwealth Home Support Program, combining funding from the HAC, Commonwealth HAC Program and the National Respite for Carers Program. That was their first um, recommendation. The next one was that the range of models offered under the National Respite for Carers Program continue to be offered under the Commonwealth Home Support Program, including models not currently offered under the Commonwealth HAC Program. So we looked more towards the offerings that came out of the Commonwealth Home, uh, sorry, the National Respite for Carers Program in terms of what models might need and support respite going forward. And the ones, things that aren't in the HAC program, for example, are the, the uh, respite cottages, the overnight respite cottages are not something that are currently sit within the Commonwealth HAC program, but they are in the National Respite for Carers program. The dis discussion paper also noted that the approach to carer support services other than respite will be considered separately and as part of the carer's policy consideration. So the Department of Social Services is also looking at a carer's policy. Um, and so they've, we've, they've actually recommended also noted in there that we should be um, making sure that the broader need to support carers is picked up through that policy. The principles um, that, um, of consumer directed care was another one that came through very strongly and that it should be embedded in service delivery across all services offered under the Commonwealth Home Support Program. The manual um, for Com the Commonwealth Home Support Program will provide examples of how this can be achieved. Um, with regard to respite in particular, uh, it could mean arranging respite that best suits the needs of the carers and the care recipients. So this might envisage, and it's ideas at the moment, as you know, nothing's finalised yet, but it should, could take into account things like where, is res where does respite occur, uh, the preferred model of respite, where the carer chooses to stay with, with the care, whether the, sorry, whether the carer chooses to stay with the care recipient or not during respite period, as well as activities that are actually offered during respite. So this is where we are envisaging the consumer may have a voice in here um, and that their, their needs and their carer's needs might actually be considered more than they currently are under, are under the current arrangements for both the National Respite for Carers Program and the Commonwealth HAC Program. While the Commonwealth... Ho um, um, oh, the other important thing is that the Commonwealth Home Support Program will be positioned, as is the HAC Program right now, as the entry level tier um, to the aged care system. I think in the discussion paper they called it um, basic entrance. I think they're moving that language now because of some strong feedback about the word basic um, to entry level tier. While the Commonwealth Home Support Program will most, mostly provide support that can be described as entry level or, or to meet the needs of people with low levels of need, we do acknowledge, um, and we're very aware of this, that there are carers who actually have high care needs accessing these services right now. We don't envisage to cease that arrangement, but what we're saying is the intent of the program is to hit that entry level arrangement. Okay, as outlined in the discussion paper, the sector support and development activities are proposed to be continued under the Commonwealth Home Support Program, but they are to be considered primarily in the context of the whole of aged care support um, available. And these are currently available for the rest of aged care under two granting streams called the Aged Care Workforce Fund and the Aged Care Service Improvement and Healthy Ageing Grant Fund, or for those in the department who like to acronise everything, we call it AXIHAG. 
They're important things to know because that is where they're talking about from the Commonwealth Home Support Program where we would do sector development from. In saying that, um, and this does acknowledge that we've got common elements that are actually transitioning across all of aged care and not just to particular parts of aged care. And we want, for example, workforce. The, the issues around making sure we've got a sustainable workforce is not unique just to one part of aged care and we want the whole spectrum to be taken into account. However, we do acknowledge that there is some sector support and development work that is quite specific to the Commonwealth Home Support Program needs and that um, we will have some targeting in those programs to make sure those items aren't lost and we don't lose that focus. Um, so, for example, we were looking, it was, I was asking specifically about what would be the example of that, so I had something to reference for you. And they've talked to, talked to me about the, you know, embedding of wellness um, and reablement into the program, which is not currently a focus at the moment of those two granting programs as they currently stand. If you want to know more about those granting programs, there is a lot of information up on the department's website if you want to understand how those granting programs are currently operated. It's proposed that most of the funding for sector to support and development within the Commonwealth Home Support Program will be um, allocated through an, a competitive approach. So we think that it will go out through a competitive approach. Now, I have to say we think because the final decisions haven't yet been made, but that's where it looks like we're landing today. Okay, a bit about My Aged Care website because it's all relevant in the context of the assessment. For those that don't know, My Aged Care uh, website was introduced on the 1st of July 2013 and it was to alleviate some of the issues um, that we had feedback from consumers in particular about the um, multiple sources of information and the difficulty they experienced in actually navigating the aged care system uh, more broadly. Interestingly, you know, in running a state office, which I've done now for a couple of years, we have a lot of staff who work in aged care in my office, about half of them, and they all come tell me exactly the same story when they have a parent who needs aged care. Is Although I work in aged care, I couldn't work at how to work the system. So it wasn't a great reference point when they work in the aged care system. So uh, this was a really important change. Um, further developments of my aged care are actually integral to the implementation of the Commonwealth Home Support Program. That's very hard to read. I do apologise. Uh, this is a snapshot from a screen on my aged care. So, my aged care is a website, as I indicated, but it also is a helpline, and it's available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every weekday and from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays across Australia. It does hold a lot of information in there to assist people, and if you haven't had a look, I encourage you to do so. It also starts to market aged care services, so consumers can actually choose to, go to find information. They can find services available in their area, and then they can actually choose to go and find out more information about that service. So there's a lot of detail about all the residential aged care services in particular currently available on that website. And if you haven't had a look, it is worth um, going and having a trawl through. And it's some, um, it is written in much more plain English than we've ever achieved in, um, I'm not sure, in, sure that we've hit the ultimate test in plain English, but it certainly is a lot better than in, um, some of the old website that were written by um, the department. Okay, the next stages for My Age Care, and this is where it becomes probably particularly important for the Commonwealth Home Support Program, is that we're going to start impl imp implementing, and it is incrementally from 2015, My Age Care will become the registration process uh, for client information. So it will become the one-stop shop, even though we don't like that language, but that principle will start to apply and that clients will access all aged care through this process. Client information will be registered on this site. It will, have e it, it will retain and maintain and continue to develop um, easy access to uh, information about aged care and aged care um, and other factors around aged care that people need. And most importantly, it will help consumers identify um, where they can actually locate support. It's also envisaged that it will simplify and standardise the way old people have their needs addressed. 
incorporating, incorporating the client uh, record so that that information can be shared with the relevant providers and the need to continuously repeat that information diminishes. Um, and it will also be the um, site that contains the assessment information. As I said, we're going to independently assess people's needs and it will be the assessment information will actually be held up in My Age Care website. Now, if you haven't been to a session on My Age Care and aren't fully aware of it, there is a lot of information up on the department's website about it and they do hold regular forums around the country for at um, different times. Um, you can register your interest to stay informed about what's happening in My Age Care. Okay. How will uh, respite be accessed under the Commonwealth Home, um, Commonwealth Home Support Program? Uh, I'm not going to run through the detail because everything written on that slide is actually written in my talking points. <laughs> so I'll let you to read it. Um, but the, the, the principles are very similar to what you're operating in now. Um, with the change in the front end process and how we get individuals into the system in the first instance. We're very aware that in particular in respite that sometimes it's an emergency and we don't have a lot of time for complex assessment processes. That information has been strongly fed back to the Commonwealth and the processes are being adjusted to make sure that we have that rapid response that's actually needed as well in the system and in the design. Okay, um, so the department will continue to analyse the submissions we've received. There is a lot of information in those submissions and we're very grateful for the time that's been taken by individuals to actually respond to that discussion paper. The feedback that we have received is shaping and refining the program as we had envisaged it, so we are trying to take account of the feedback we've received. The key topics that um, feedback was received um, and where there was very strong messaging were around entry through My Age Care um, and the contact centre. Um, there was lots of detail about making sure that we meet the needs of stakeholders, including our cold community, um, and making sure that we can respond to matters quite urgently if we need to. Our eligibility for the program. Stakeholders sought more detail on the eligibility criteria and definitions of basic support and how they relate to respites and the need for care recipients. Um, I've covered off some of that point earlier in the presentation, so we're already starting to pick up that message and make sure that we um, really understand what does the uh, entry level mean in the context of respite. Wellness and reablement. Um, there was strong support for a greater focus on wellness. Uh, reablement and, rest and restorative approaches in the program. Um, so we're looking at those that feedback quite strong, uh, quite a lot at the moment. Um, fees, there was, fee, there was support for a nationally consistent fees policy um, with a lot of providers wanting to seek further information. Obviously, we're very acutely aware this affects your business models and how you interact with clients. Um, I, do, I want to make sure that everyone is aware that there is a consultative group around that and that does include both providers and consumers so we're trying to make sure we balance the view in terms of how the fees policy gets set. And transitional arrangements, this was one that um, there was particular interest in how we're actually going to transition from all these programs and into the Commonwealth Home Support Program um, from the 1st of July 2015. As I said, uh, Karen Wilson's coming here tomorrow to also address uh, at this conference and she will address, um, talk more on care support more broadly but also picking up the specific focus of disability care support in her presentation. If you want um, any further information on the material I've covered or some of the documents I've referenced, they are available on the websites. Um, so please um, feel free to go and use those websites and um, thank you. We take questions after. Yeah, we can take some questions now. Now? Yeah. Now. Chris, Chris sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Right. 
You've got both sides. <laughs> Acutely aware of this <laughs> and I appreciate the feedback because it was the feedback from the sector that sort of made us have a really good look at it. We are having a look at what that, that actually means and therefore what that means for the fees policy, um, obviously, and therefore, but we also are aware we have clients right now receiving very, very high, I have a client, and I won't tell you what jurisdiction, in the HAC program that receives $1.2 million worth of service. That's just an indicator of, yes, we're very aware of it. Now, whether that person should have received a hack package is a whole question and debate with the state government, obviously, um, in particular. But yes, we're aware of those things and we're aware that there's going to take time to transition these matters across and to actually put that end-to-end -end aged care structure in place. But I think um, some of the reference that was made in the National Aged Care, that I made earlier in the presentation around the National Aged Care Alliance making a reference to moving it away from grant funding to um, uh, funding based, uh, based on individual needs going forward, maybe trying to pick up some of those points that you've raised. So aware of it, don't have an immediate solution for you today, um, other than we're having a good look at it and some of the future directions may help us pick that, address that issue. But we're also aware we're not going to immediately stop servicing clients either. It's not the intent of the reforms. Chris was down the back. <laughs> Absolutely. So, here are two. Um, one, I got asked um, by someone earlier today uh, about the issue about what happens to uh, people with younger onset dementia and their carers, and uh, can they access service through the gateway? And the reason I'm asking this uh, the question is because I've had um, people report to me very widely differing experiences of trying to get service. That's question one. Right. Okay, so let's take those two questions. One of them, we don't, you're right, Chris, we don't have the direct answer on. However, let's just look at the policy that goes on at the moment with the state governments. We already have an agreement with state and territory governments that we can service young people in, in aged care, and particularly in residential aged care and community aged care packages. And we basically sort the money out in the back room. That's the job of treasuries. So we can already do that. When we s supported the transition of the HAC program being divided, between the jurisdictions, we also agreed in principle that we would maintain that, so that we wouldn't have individuals without service. So um, we're, we're always um, up against those, those things because we do have an age split that kind of divides aged care from disability. But we're not there to make sure that no one gets, that gets no service. We're very aware of those. Carolyn Smith, who's the Deputy Secretary uh, looking after aged care, and Felicity Hand, who's the Deputy Secretary looking after disability are having very interlinked conversations right now to try and make sure that we are clear about how we manage these issues going forward. Um, if you're getting different sets of feedback on my aged care, I will take that back because we are trying to make sure that my, my aged care is giving a consistent amount of, a consistent level of feedback, but if that's not occurring, we'll, we'll take that up. Um, and if that does occur, um, we do have a New South Wales um, 
email address on the bottom, take that down and send that through because I get to answer those. Um, I'll see them anyway. Um, so we'll pick that, that particular issue up. The second thing about innovation is a really good question. The AXIHAG program, sorry about the acronym, but I can never remember what all the words mean, um, but I know what it does. It does look at, it does look at sector development, but it does pick up innovation. So that's why I said it'd be really good to go and have a look at how that grant program is structured right now. So under that granting program, it's project based, a lot of project based work that is actually designed to make sure that we do get that sector development. Um, piece in there and that we do continuously learn um, um, from ourselves and share that information. So it is available in those programs. My understanding from what I'm, I'm involved in helping design this from a state perspective is that there is that absolute intent that we keep that focus in that program. So I think respite is in there. You need to have a look and make sure that the guidelines are strong enough from your perspective and if not, I would encourage you to feed back to the department but I'll take that message back as well. Well, what they're indicating, and I have to be careful here because we haven't got any decisions yet, so we're still, is that what we're trying to get through this, the sector development is that it does line up with all aged care sector development. So we're not just focusing on a particular stream and not getting the lessons across all of aged care. So from, you know, if we're doing some work in the Commonwealth Home Support Program area in the context of respite, well then what does that mean in the context of respite in residential aged care or through other package arrangements? So making sure that we get that look across the sector and we do get end-to-end -end aged care. So that's the intent, but they're very clearly saying there will be target areas, well they're indicating there will be target areas within that AXIHAG group to make sure that we can pick up the particular needs of the entry level or the Commonwealth Home Support Program um, going forward. That's probably the best I can do today until I get a firm answer. Any decision in regard to the care and support, the regional care and support centres at the department in delayed. Yeah, I haven't got a decision yet for you, unfortunately, otherwise I would have announced it. No, I don't. <laughs> um, if I can go back to the food policy for a minute. Sure. Uh, I'll just let you know there's a light shining right behind yeah, my head, so... <laughs> you look sainted right now. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Um, are we going to get any... When the peace policy comes out, are we going to get any assistance with It's a really good question. Again, I was talking to my colleague in Canberra who's um, responsible to do communication change management process, Kerry Westcott and, I was, Westcott, sorry, and I was talking to her about this exact issue and making sure that the strategy has the strategy for um, educating and supporting providers but also consumers and the transitional arrangements through there as well as our own staff and making sure they're prepared. So I have taken the issue up but I'll take it back again and say and make sure that the message gets passed on. Uh, I haven't seen anything particularly drafted at this stage, but certainly the issue has been raised. Any other questions? Password. Sorry, I'll come back. Uh, no, it's protected information. We don't display that. Um, so, yes, uh, it would be controlled. And you, the provider would have access to that information because you, the consumer, have actually gone to that provider and said, I'm interested in you providing services. They would then be allowed to access the record to have a look at what your, your needs might be. Um, and then, um, and if, should you then move, um, get services through them, then they would get access to another level of detail. But, you know, it's protected information, so and it be treated as such. Behind? Hi, Christine. Hi,
Uh, it, I think it's one of those ones that we're just grappling with at the moment in the context of where does it best fit. Uh, it kind of fits in, it, at the moment it sits as part of sector development and support, so it is in there. Um, but as you know, or we may not know, um, aged care has a cold strategy. Um, and we're very committed to um, that, that particular strategy and making sure that we meet the needs of all the Australian populations, not just some. Um, so it certainly remains a key priority area. Exactly whether where it fits, I don't know yet because I haven't seen the final set of program guidelines. I haven't seen any sets of program guidelines yet, which reminds me I want one. But anyway, um, yeah, so I can't quite answer your question. Uh, yeah, I will back to Chris is in front of you, so I imagine that's what this is. Um, this conference is, is trying to address. What we're trying, what I'm here to talk about, is what's going to happen with the respite in the context of the Commonwealth Home Support Program. And I flagged in there that DSS is working on a carer policy that Karen Wilson will be here to address. So otherwise, you're going to just going to hear two same messages from the Commonwealth. Um, so she will pick up those particular points, but what we're saying in here is we're very focused on making sure there's respite, respite available for care recipients who need it and for obviously carers who also need to have that break. But we do recognise there's a need to have greater carer support and it's the carer's policy that's being um, considered or, um, at the moment that will actually try and pick up those exact issues. So. Uh, later on there will be, not right now, there's not, we're still in the middle of design, but this is actually about, yeah, respite, which is sometimes is for the benefit of the carer. Uh, <laughs> depends how, some people get into care uh, respite for other reasons. No, I have to admit, all I, all I know uh, is that it's, there's one being considered and drafted and I don't have any other details. So Karen Wilson tomorrow will be much better placed to answer your questions on the carer. One more and then I'm yeah. off. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I would imagine that when we transfer across fully to the Commonwealth, that that will change. Well, the HAC MDS is actually a joint owned data set between the state and the Commonwealth. It was set up that way originally. Um, the decision about whether we're going to retain the HAC minimum data set or whether we move to using the DSS data exchange is a matter that's currently being considered. And I don't have an answer for you um, in those. But what we do recognise is the longitudinal information that's actually in the hack minimum data set because it's been collected for so many, many years is incredibly valuable um, for research and for understanding the, transi the, the work that's happened with time and how we've responded particular, to particular needs. So there is a focus on making sure that we don't lose some of the benefit of having the hack minimum data set as well. But in saying that, we're also acutely aware we're all moving to the National um, Disability Insurance Scheme with time. Um, and what is its needs in its data collection system going forward? Because HAC minimum data set now covers both of those um, service dimensions. So not really a black and white answer to your black and white question. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, and this is one of the challenges. Yeah, yeah, we know. Okay. Uh, we're just going to have to wrap up this session. I'm sure, thank you, Lizelle, uh, for a very informative presentation. And I'm sure you'll be hanging around later if anyone has any further questions for you.